Hi there folks, my name is Connor, I'm an ecologist from Perth in Scotland and today we're going to be discussing the subject of rewilding. We're going to look at what it is, why we need to do it, different ways in which we can do it and the importance of keystone species. Rewilding is a form of ecological restoration which is focused on increasing biodiversity, reinstating natural processes and improving the health of ecosystems to the point where nature can eventually look after itself without human intervention. Rewilding is most often associated with the large-scale ecological restoration of the landscape. For instance, the creation of native woodland habitat on a state covering hundreds of square kilometres. However, it can also be applied to small-scale restoration. For instance, introducing wildflowers and a pond to your garden to make it more biodiverse. We need to rewild because, simply put, nature in the UK is in peril. Historical destruction of our natural environment has resulted in us becoming one of the least biodiverse countries in the world. Our precious remaining wild spaces are still under threat today and nature continues to decline, with many species still at the risk of extinction. Increasing global temperatures and extreme weather as a result of climate change also threatens the future of many species. But through rewilding, we can restore ecosystems and habitats and create healthier natural environments which will simultaneously boost biodiversity and help sequester carbon levels in the atmosphere. We can give nature a chance to recover and help safeguard the future of species for years to come. Generally speaking, rewilding can be divided into two subcategories. Active rewilding relies heavily on human intervention. This approach may be required to help establish or drastically improve an ecosystem, such as the planting of a native woodland habitat, the removal of artificial barriers such as weirs and dams, or the reintroduction of species such as beaver. Passive rewilding is a more hands-off approach where human intervention is withdrawn, and nature is left alone to take its own course. It's a type of rewilding that's often associated with land abandonment, for example, letting an industrial site go wild or letting farmland revert back to nature. Which approach is right for you will depend on your site. It's really important to consider what habitat is already there and what level of intervention is required. You might find that an active approach is required initially perhaps to manage grazing pressure or remove invasive non-native species from the site. On the contrary, you might find that the site is already well established and would be best left alone for nature to work itself. A key element of rewilding is the reintroduction of native keystone species which have been lost from Britain. Keystone species have a significant impact on the environment around them which helps to ultimately define their ecosystem and brings benefits to the biodiversity around them. Wolves, lynx and beaver are all examples of keystone species, the latter of which has since returned to the UK and plays a crucial role in creating wetland ecosystems which benefit birds, insects, amphibians, bats and many other animals. However, conflicts can arise between keystone species and humans, so we need to work with people to help them understand the importance of these animals and work towards a future where we can live more harmoniously with nature. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to the Woodlands TV channel. I also run my own channel, the link for which will be in the description below. In the next video of this rewilding mini-series, we will be looking at differences between tree planting and natural regeneration. Thanks for watching.